picking on you, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself so you know sort of where I'm coming from and my positionality in, in all of this. Um, so my name is Julie Cavanaugh. I'm a special education teacher in an elementary school in Red Hook, Brooklyn, where I've been since 2001. Um, I'm a traditional route educator. I got my undergrad at Indiana University, and I taught in Indiana for a year before I came to New York, grew up in New Jersey. I uh, got my master's in teaching struggling readers at Fordham and my um, 30 and above in administration at Brooklyn College. Um, so I've spent my whole New York City teaching career um, in one school at PS15 and um, started when the sort of reforms that we've all been crushed under the last few years also started. Um, you know, as with any teacher starting out, I, in the first few years, I was surviving in the classroom, as I think is common practice for new teachers. Um, as I became more sturdy and got more equal footing, um, I started becoming more interested in education policy. And uh, I joined a group called Teachers Network, which was founded in 1989. Um, and there was a governor's convention led by then Governor Bill Clinton, um, instituted by then President George Bush the um, first. And it was a convention on education. And lots of corporations were invited, but not a single parent or teacher was. And so Teacher Network, Teachers Network was founded um, to bring the teacher's voice into public education and to education policy. Um, that organization no longer exists, um, but that was my first um, entry into education policy. Um, and then in 2008, my school was forced to co-locate with a charter school. And that's really when I became activated um, beyond sort of the cerebral part of education policy and more in terms of activism. Um, at that point, I had never attended a protest in my life. Um, you know, I was not active in the union, I was not the chapter leader, which I am now. Um, you know, I, I, it was more of thinking about policy, not action. And um, so our community fought the um, co-location, and I wasn't very involved. I was in school at the time, so I sort of sat on the sidelines mostly. And uh, it became very clear very quickly quickly how much was wrong with this process. And this was before the reauthorization of mayoral control and the change in school utilization laws. So this was before co-locations were co-locations like we know them, and before school closings were everybody knows about school closings. So the first round, I sat on the sidelines, but it was very clear something was wrong. And the first year, the following year, that we were co-located with the school, there started to, a lot of problems started to rise. And we called in the union, and the union's answer was, well, you have to organize their teachers. Not, we're gonna help you in any way, shape, or form deal with all of these issues that are affecting your working conditions and your students' learning conditions. All you can do is get their teachers to join the union, which really rode us the wrong way. Um, then, the charter school was going to be extended. They originally told the community it was only for a year. The following year, they decided they wanted to extend it for five years. Um, and we were very lucky in that that summer, the new reauthorization included the change in school utilization law and now gave us a legal process to navigate in terms of co-location. So our school, along with 188 and District 1, were the two schools that were the first to navigate the new co-location um, policy, along with um, the first, I think it was 22 schools that year that faced closure, including the first round of Jamaica facing closure. Um, and so one of my first acts, political acts, was um, joining with a parent and a student, and we sued for the right to protest on Mayor Bloomberg's block. Um, he had claimed that his block was a no First Amendment zone, essentially. No one can protest there. Um, so we won and held that protest in January, and I've been involved ever since. Um, so fast forward to today, I'm sitting here, and um, what I've realized in my journey over the last several years is that um, the best position we as educator, educators have to best serve our students 
to protect public education and to stop the tidal wave of devastating and destructive reforms that are facing our kids and our schools and our profession um, is via our union. And my position is that our union has not done what they should have done over the last 10 years and unions more broadly over the last 30 years in order to protect us. And uh, that's why um, you know, I'm one of the founding members of MORE and uh, why I'm running for president. So um, with that, that's a little bit about me. I'd love to hear more about you, what you're concerned with, um, and you know, anything that you want to ask me or tell me, please do. Yes. Well, there's um, I think the anxiety among us older teachers who are planning to retire in you know, the next couple of